China's People's Liberation Army sent nearly 150 warplanes into Taiwanese air defense identification zone in the first four days of October, requiring Taiwan to scramble jets and issue warnings. Why is China doing this now and what could come next? Joining me to discuss this and much more, the president of the Population Research Institute, author of The Bully of Asia, Stephen Mosier. Steve, thanks for being here. The aggression we saw from China over the weekend and earlier this week towards Taiwan is concerning. China has claimed Taiwan since 1949. It's threatened a military takeover if Taiwan should ever formally declare its independence. What do you make of China's timing and why the increased aggression now? Well, I think it's very clear why, why we're seeing increased aggression towards Taiwan. We have the absolute humiliating debacle of the United States uh, leaving Afghanistan, uh, leaving American citizens behind, leaving hundreds, thousands of people who helped us, who may have green cards uh, there at the mercy of the Taliban. Uh, China has already moved in forces, by the way, to uh, reportedly to take over the Bagram uh, Air, Force, Air, Air Base, uh, which we uh, conveniently left for them with all of our equipment. So now I think I think they see uh, America as weak, and now they're moving more and more aggressively to try to take over democratic uh, Taiwan. Now, the good news is last year, uh, we quietly sent American service members, the Trump administration sent uh, a small contingent of American forces to Taiwan to train uh, local army units. Um, about two dozen members of the U.S. Special Operations Forces, some Marines are there to help with small boat training. Uh, that's really important because it signals to China uh, that we're serious about help, helping democratic Taiwan uh, to defend itself against communist China. And, you know, we had U.S. military officials earlier this year, uh, people like uh, General Milley, uh, testify that, well, uh, uh, China does have de designs on Taiwan within the next six years, mm -hmm. but, you know, we have some time. If those timeline predictions are anywhere close to what the timeline predictions regarding um, oh, I don't know, the Afghan government's ability to resist a Taliban takeover, uh, then the American-trained Taiwanese forces may be tested sooner uh, rather than later, Raymond. Yeah, you're right. Uh, during an interview with ABC Australia, Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu, had this to say when asked if he thought Chinese President Xi would act uh, on the threats he's made to Taiwan. Listen. We are very concerned that China is going to launch a war against Taiwan at some point. For instance, if their internal situation is getting uh, more serious than before, and in the very classical way of understanding about the authoritarianism, they might launch a crisis externally in order to divert domestic attention. So in the recent uh, power region or power outages in China, that is something that we have been observing very carefully because we are concerned if the domestic discontent or economic slowdown is getting very serious, Taiwan might become a target of this authoritarianism to divert its domestic attention. Steve, how likely is that scenario? Well, I think it's, it's, it's fairly likely. We certainly can't rule it out because what uh, people don't realize is that China is in the middle of multiple crises right now. We've talked before about the, the, the birth dearth the fact that China's population is aging and dying, their economy is going to go slowly downhill because they have too few workers, too few young people to fuel the economy. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they have an energy crunch. Uh, they shot themselves in the foot, metaphorically speaking, by banning Australian coal. And now they have an energy shortage, brownouts, blackouts in Chinese cities. That's slowing right. down industrial production. The other thing that I wrote about recently in the New York Post was this, they're killing off billionaires. Xi Jinping, dictator Xi Jinping, is a, right. a devout communist, and, and over 100 billionaires have been arrested, tortured, killed, sometimes suicided, which means you push them off a 20-story building and, and pretend that it's suicide, and their assets are being confiscated. They're killing off slowly the high-tech sector of the Chinese economy. Uh, that will hurt them as well. So multiple crises, all created by Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party, uh, would they seek a foreign adventure to divert the Chinese people's attention from the collapse of the property market, the collapse of the economy? Mm -hmm. uh, the fact, the lights are going out and it's going to get very cold this winter. Absolutely. Uh, the, the, Chi the defense minister in Taiwan is saying that if China launched an all-out war against it, they would fight to the end. 
What threat does that pose to the balance of power in the region? Were Beijing to move against Taiwan? Well, here, here's the thing. I lived on Taiwan for several years. I speak the local language. I've written books about Taiwan. I actually wrote a book about a fictional uh, Chinese invasion of Taiwan where uh, Taiwan wins. The Chinese people will fight. Uh, they have said in polls a vast majority will resist a, a, a aggressive takeover of the island. Uh, they do not want to suffer the same fate as Tibet or Hong Kong being crushed by communist tyranny. And the other thing is right. Taiwan is the linchpin of the defensive perimeter around China. It links Japan and, and South Korea in the north with the Philippines and our allies, Australia, in the south. If you lose Taiwan, you give the People's Liberation Army Navy open access to the Pacific Ocean, and uh, you break that defensive perimeter. That's why Japan has recently said, Raymond, that they will help with the defense of Taiwan. That was a breakthrough. That's nothing that Japan has ever said before. Mm. On Tuesday, President Biden had this to say to reporters when asked about China's provocation over Taiwan. Watch. I've spoken with Xi about Taiwan. We agree we will abide by the Taiwan agreement. That's where we are. And we made it clear that I don't think he should be doing anything other than abiding by the agreement. Abiding by the agreement. What does that mean, Steve? How much influence does this administration have when dealing with China? Now, I have no idea what uh, what President Biden is saying. Uh, there is no agreement between the United States and China concerning the future of Taiwan. There is an understanding, which is a very important distinction in diplomatic parlance. The United States mm -hmm. acknowledges that China says, and Taiwan says, that there's only one China and that Taiwan is a part of China. That's all we have done. We have not agreed anything beyond that. Uh, this whole administration's approach uh, to China is one of, let's solve the problem of trade, let's solve the problem of the pandemic, let's solve the problem of human rights. They don't realize that, that this is naive. The truth is that China is bent on global domination and the United States is in the way. Uh, China is in a war with the United States across all domains. Uh, we know the economic, the psychological, the biological, uh, all domains except the kinetic. We're not firing bullets at each other. And if we uh, enjoy peace through strength in the future, that won't happen. But China has been at war with us for decades. Uh, we need to understand that. Uh, you can't mm. solve the Taiwan problem without ste stepping back and, and realizing yeah. that this is part of a larger problem of the Chinese Communist Party being aggressive, not just towards Taiwan. It has threatened to nuke Japan. It has threatened aggressive action, taken aggressive action towards India. It is, it is an aggressive uh, expansionist power uh, across all of its frontiers. No, we, we shouldn't even be trading with them at this point. Just on the human rights abuses alone, China's foreign ministry said it was the U.S. that is being provocative and harming regional peace with its arms sales to Taiwan and warships sailing regularly through the Taiwan Strait. He added, quote, China is resolutely opposed to this and takes necessary countermeasures. Engaging in Taiwan independence is a dead end. China will take all steps needed and firmly smash any Taiwan independence plots. Uh, is some of this Chinese saber rattling a response to the U.S. sale of uh, those nuclear powered subs to Australia a few weeks ago, which is also pro -Tai -Tai Taiwan, by the way? Well, yes, and Australia and India and uh, Japan are all stepping up now and realizing how important is uh, Taiwan is to the defense of the region and to the need to to constrain China, uh, the Chinese Communist Party. And and look, I think that Beijing sees that we were humiliated in the Afghan debacle, and it's even more important now, post Afghanistan, that we support Taiwan. You know, we tried and failed to impose a functioning mm -hmm. democracy on the Afghan people. We spent lots of blood, time, and treasure doing that failed. Uh, the Taiwanese succeeded in setting up a functioning democracy on the island, and it's important that we don't abandon them. Taiwan is really China's hope for the future. Uh, Taiwan is a fully functioning mm -hmm. democracy. It gives hope to the people on the mainland that one day they too may enjoy human rights and, and freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, they can see it happening 90 miles away on Taiwan. And of course, that's exactly why uh, the Chinese Communist Party wants to kill this example right. of a fully functioning free country before the ideas of democracy infect the people on the mainland.
Steve, before I let you go, I have to return to the homeland very quickly. I wanted to talk about the Hyde Amendment, uh, Senator Joe Manchin insisting that that be inserted in the budget bill. But there's this other big story that really is getting so little attention. The University of Pittsburgh is under fire after announcing that a D.C.-based law firm would conduct an independent investigation of its fetal tissue practices. The investigation was announced after allegations of human organ harvesting at Pitt surfaced. Multiple physicians tell Fox News that Pitt's previous statements pointed to the possibility that organs were extracted from live fetuses. Your thoughts on this story? We hear about organ harvesting in China as a form of torture. How can this be happening here in the United States? Well, sadly, it is happening here in the United States in the name of scientific research. Uh, it's bad enough that, that uh, the Biden administration wants uh, to allow dismemberment abortions again, but to deliver babies alive and then harvest their organs, some of which are then going to be not just studied in a lab, but, but transplanted uh, onto rats and mice and laboratory animals to see how they function is, is beyond horrific. It's beyond barbaric. Uh, we need to stop this. I, I, I'm afraid that, how, that, though, that we're dealing with the most radically pro-abortion administration ever in American history. They have no concern for human life, uh, born or, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, after birth or before birth. And uh, it, it's going to get worse until uh, we have a new election. We will leave it there. Bully of Asia by Stephen Mosher is the definitive work on China's plans for global dominance. It's available at bookstores everywhere. Steve, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Raymond.